Today I'm going to be talking about industry trends. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of, I don't know what, because it's Saturday and I kind of haven't labeled Saturday yet. I was thinking about like shit talking Saturdays. I don't know, it's, it's weird, like I don't really have a name for this. Yeah, I am struggling. I will figure it out. Really today is just another trend conversation. It's more around shifts in the industry. After watching a trends post by Rand Siegel, after listening to his uh, video, which I'll link below, he definitely gave me some things to think about. And so there's two types of trends that we generally get into, which is, you know, what's popular right now? It's popular to use bright colors and it's popular to use gradients and it's popular to use sans serif fonts. If you're a tech company and if you're a couture clothing brand, you use uh, serif fonts. That's the type of thing that I'm talking about. The other trends are things that you need to see coming. Big shifts in the industry and they're on their way and you need to gear yourself up because if you don't see them, you're probably gonna be in a bit of trouble. So let me give you an example of that. In 2010, Steve Jobs killed Flash. In one letter or an email, crushed the industry. And I will try and find it and link it below. Like an entire kind of industry, I guess, of Flash guys broke my heart. I genuinely, genuinely, genuinely felt heartbroken when Steve Jobs said that he would not support it on iOS devices and that Flash is pretty much crap and each your processor and that and it hurt because I believe there were ways around it. The thing there was a shift was coming. Apple was no longer going to subscribe to using the Flash player. The next thing was HTML5 and that meant that I had to brush up on the skills I hadn't used in almost 10 years which is building pure HTML websites. And that felt so backwards for me. Almost 10 years later, I still don't feel that HTML sites are nearly as dynamic and rich experiences that Flash was. Not to say it was wrong. I actually agree wholeheartedly, despite my broken heart, I actually believe that it was the right move. And I love seeing how the people did get over it. Guys were pushed. And I think a lot of guys who were traditional Flash guys went out and created new businesses and new opportunities which have shaped the industry into what it is now. And I mean, I love product design and I'm glad that we're in design systems and that sort of phase. So you've got to see those big shifts in the industry and adapt to them. I'm not sure that I've kind of got this down, but I'm gonna try and explain some of the things I'd like to see or that I do see based on my own personal experience. I literally haven't read another article about like pointing out these things. So I'm, I'm going based on things. I have watched one or two YouTube videos where like they're so long winded, I don't pay enough attention, apologies. One of the first things that I think are going to be big going forward is the boutique agency. Boutique agencies can one, specialize in something, which means customers are gonna come with you because you specialize in a specific type of work, not trying to do everything, or you've got a specific type of style that people are looking for. Given that all of the digital agencies were mostly consumed by traditional ad agencies, and they failed to kind of shift in the right direction, I mean, they're not doing product design and things like that, they're still just doing brands. Like, marketing websites. Not that there isn't a need for it, but there's a very small need for that and it's why they're not seeing huge success. They're not adapting. They're not adapting to new technology trends. They're not adapting quick enough. They're big beasts. There's not anybody kind of skilled enough like there that seems to be able to kind of get these things to work. I, I don't know of a success story. If you do, please let me know in the comments below. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to have this conversation, a healthy conversation about it because I feel that I was part of a failing industry when I was in doing digital in 
the ad industry despite all its promise. If you've got the opportunity to set yourself up, do something very unique. There's people who are sitting in corporate environments and they have great skills and those corporate environments are limiting their talent and opportunities. So breaking away, starting your own place where you focus on that niche thing could probably be huge because I see a trend where corporates are going to take specialized things and hire specialized boutique agencies to deliver on that. A phase of design is moving out of these big corporates that have set up these huge design teams. Now, I'm not talking about their failure to centralize design. I still believe that needs to happen. I feel it's a huge failure that they are setting up these design teams in different departments and everybody's starting to go back to being schizophrenic again because there's no consistency across the design language. I'm not a huge fan of that and I'm not talking about that. That's, that's a mistake and I, they will realize in two years time and they'll be six months to a year behind where we are right now. What I am saying is that there are sometimes problems that need to be solved and trying to solve them internally can sometimes be the problem. So there are companies like AJ and Smart who you can go to and they will work with you to do a design sprint and growth hacking to get your product going. They don't actually do production as far as I'm aware but they do actually help you through a sprint and quite rapidly solve a problem with you. And where I'm seeing this, I'm not sure if, I think they do go to their, some of their clients, but I think they also then bring some of their clients to them and they do great workshops on this and any company would be smart to use them. There's also companies like PwC who have an experience lab. You know, these things are very useful to take people out of the environment, away from all their daily tasks and noise and things like that and get them into a, a different environment where you kind of pull them along, drag them along quickly with the right people, the right, right, right people are in the room and you very rapidly produce something that you could then take and take it back to your company where you could probably then get your centralized design team to execute on that better. Storytelling is at the heart of most of what we do and who better than these amazing talented creatives to be coming up with great stories. So I think if there was a little less relying on media up front to dictate where you tell your story and you rather figure out the right story and integrate it into the problems that you're trying to solve and the products, I think then you're gonna have better solutions. Which brings me on to my next thing, leveraging stories to drive your product. What I mean by this is that when you design, you design in a narrative rather than through a process. What you would do is actually go and write a story about what is the problem that you're trying to solve and how would you do it and, and what would the experience be and it becomes a lot more crossing the, the lines that divide service design, customer experience, product, user experience, it's the whole ecosystem and it's going, well, what do we as a business and as a brand want to do and how would we be profitable doing that? So what's that narrative? And I think aligning to that narrative and then going and, and building against that narrative, that storyline, I would see as something that's going to happen more often. And that to me makes sense because people understand stories. People can roll with stories. People can do that. People don't understand bureaucracy in an organization. People don't understand technical limitations due to legacy systems. People don't understand that, which is a lot of the time what is dictating things. Whereas when you have a solid story to align to, then no matter what, everything else has to work to support it. And that includes, you know, everything from the ideation to the build, to the execution, to the follow through, to the awareness campaigns, everything is part of that narrative that you put out there. You know, I think of marketing departments who I've often said, I believe are pretty obsolete and I think that they probably don't have a space anymore. Where they are in organizations, I think they should probably fall under the product and design teams. And it brings me to my next subject, which is content creation. I think, you know, this is a big thing. Content personalization and things like that are stuff that marketing people should be thinking about. And they should be thinking about it at the same time that the products are being created. 
and part of that story that you're trying to tell. If you started doing that early and in the product room where people, things are being created, I think you'd have a better piece of content because you would actually have something for everybody. So let me let me tell you what content could be. Content could be every all the pieces of collateral you need to go and communicate what problem you've solved and how it can enrich people's lives, how you can be of service to them. So all of those pieces of collateral are part of content. Content can be a narrative that people subscribe to that makes them believe in your brand and makes them believe in your product. It plays on the emotional state to believe in you go with you but content could also be putting out a story of how did we get there what is it like working here what are the things we believe in how do we add value and i think all those things like uh, releasing a video of going cool this is how we created a five-step sign-up process in the app and what the hurdles that we went through that shows great thinking it shows what the organization is about which is good for recruiters it's good for attracting more interest in the industry there's lots of good reasons to be creating content like real life content over and above all the collateral you need to actually market your product but all of this i think is a huge opportunity for people and I do believe that content is going to start getting done in the organization and it should be done in the product room. You can't write a brief and then send it to some digital agency or some traditional agency and then they interpret it where they don't even have a clue what's going on or what it even means which is 99% of what I've ever seen in my career. It looks disconnected from the actual product that people use to the marketing collateral that gets released out into the world. I, I do believe that the content is the next thing you know when you see design systems you're going to see all of the collateral start getting added on there because you should have a consistent brand voice you think of all the different agencies that work on all the marketing efforts and you go well, there's no way they'll get it right wait a minute what if we took that message internally we had a single message that everybody leverages and subscribes to there's all these technologies that seemed like kind of futuristic rubbish that's never going to materialize let's be honest virtual reality is like 20 plus years in my life it's, it's well over 20 years that i knew about virtual reality i used to read net force books that spoke spoke about a police force that lived in a virtual world and they were in a like suits and wore these big headsets and things like that so this to me is nothing new yet it's still not fully realized and the truth is i actually feel that there's probably more room to have something like augmented reality than there is virtual reality so i think ai is probably the better solution and i think microsoft's doing some amazing work in that space and the reason why i believe in it because i can see real world practical uses for it not just some gaming and listen not to discount gaming because i actually really believe in esports which is another thing i definitely encourage people to like think about like how could you get involved in esports because it's going to be the single largest viewed sport in the world is esports just watch the space yeah i think that augmented reality is practical i can see doctors using it i can see you know drivers using it i can see all sorts of people using these headsets more practically i watched a demonstration the other day and it was amazing how many tv screens this guy could have like in his uh, you know his, his augmented space and it was so easy to just jump between them and change your view and bring them forward and backwards and you know put them in spaces in your in your home which is how you would be I, I still struggle with it because i actually like a real tv i you know i really want a tv that it's beautiful and it's just something i like but i think we are going to have homes that no longer have tvs we're all going to be walking around with these headsets and still they can stick a chip in us but that sort of stuff is what i'm talking about tech stuff so other things that along those lines are voice control devices they're everywhere it's, it's a huge thing you've got to have strategies to address this you've got to be thinking about it you should be having these things lying around the offices or giving your staff to use in their home so they can experience what it is to then there's self-driving cars 
and flying cars. And these things are going to be everywhere in the next, I think, five years. Maybe I'm being ambitious. Maybe I'm not being ambitious enough. But I think that definitely these things are going to be there. So now you've got all these technologies that are becoming a reality. You know, it's very much the Jetsons. I don't, I didn't even watch the Jetsons. So, but it's it's one of those things where it's this future world where you just talk and things happen and you just climb in your flying car and just step outside and you get in a, a driverless bus and these things are all very cool and they all need interfaces and that's something that i'm going wait a minute how many designers that i know are actually designing for this and who are the designers that are designing for this because is the same thing going to happen that happened with products so what i'm talking about is that with a lot of products the first people to ever design design products were actually developers and engineers so you had a lot of really ugly looking apps and you had things like these ui kits and things like bootstrap and material design that were ideally designed for these engineers because there weren't enough designers to actually put the stuff together. Problem with them is they're not on brand and it's lazy and it's, it doesn't speak volumes about your business. It speaks volumes about the people who designed it. They were able to release something because they could build it. Are we gonna have these engineers and developers who are actually working on the stuff that is required to drive these flying cars and these buses and things like that. Like who's thinking about these? Who's writing the narratives for these things? Who's designing the experiences? Who's doing all of that? Because right now I've got a sneaky suspicion that it's probably developers and engineers because they the first people to get into that sort of thing. So I see that as a huge opportunity. I think that we need to get out of the space of designing apps for your phone and building websites and start thinking about doing UIs for self-driving cars and building experiences for how you would automate people stepping into driverless cars and stuff like that. I agree that we do need to watch out for big shifts in the industry, that if you're not changing your skill, share, your skill set or business model or things like that, in time, you're going to be in really, really big trouble. And at the same time, you know, I predict some big changes in how things are being done as they currently are. I'd love to hear your feedback about things. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment, and stay cool. Something I'm having a little bit of trouble with at the moment is overexposure. If you've got any tips, please leave them below because I'm really struggling with video. I need to fix the lighting of videos. Audio seems to have gotten better. I sometimes have a few gremlins that creep into the microphone, but for whatever reason, I'm getting so much overexposure. And no matter what I do with the camera, how many tutorials I watch, locking things and so on, it's still causing me trouble.